Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on the inputs and outputs of requirements analysis and design definition. Let me share my screen with you and we can get stuck in. This video will look specifically at the inputs and the outputs of requirements analysis and design definition. Just so that you can see exactly where we are in the Babok guide, I've included this diagram so you can specifically see that we're busy with chapter seven of the Babok guide. Great, so just before we get started, for the, your best understanding of the content of this particular video, I definitely recommend that you go and watch parts one and two of the week five requirements analysis and design definition knowledge area videos. I've prepared those and you'll find those as part of the Babok study group. Just before we get started, if you're not familiar with the free Babok study group that I run, you are more than welcome to come and join us by registering at baexcellence.com. You'll receive more than 30 training videos, study notes, quizzes, packed and you'll also receive six weeks of emails that takes you through the program step by step. And all of that is totally free. Now, you will also receive some discount coupons because you're part of this exclusive group. If you wanted to do some IBA endorsed training with business analysis, excellence. So that's great value. You'll also be trained by myself. So I do all of the videos and I'm CBAP certified. So join us at the Babok private Facebook group. That's a great group. We've got lots of people in there that's helping each other prepare for the exam. So all of this is part of the free Babok study group. Feel free to join at baexcellence.com. Great, now let's get stuck into this video. So just to recap, requirements analysis and design definition tasks include specify and model requirements, verify requirements, validate requirements, define requirements architecture, define design options, and analyze potential value and recommend solution. So let's just run through these in terms of their purpose and their inputs and outputs. So let's start by looking at the first task, specify and model requirements. So the purpose here is to analyze synthesize and refine elicitation results into requirements and designs. So that's just to remind you of what this task is all about. Now, as I've said in some of my other input and output videos for the other knowledge areas, um, it's important that you tell yourself a story with the inputs and the outputs so that it makes sense to you. And I've tried to do that for you here so that you can see the reason and the logic for a particular input into a task and the output from that task. And that's why I said before that it's actually really valuable for you to be quite familiar with the purpose of each of the tasks or the, and the elements and really understand what that task is about. So in this case, we've got elicitation results as a, in any state as an input into specified model requirements. So if you think about this, you have now you're at a stage where you want to document your requirements, you want to model it and specify it. So you need something to come into this task to be able to do that. And the most logical thing would be the elicitation results from all those meetings that you would have had with your stakeholders. So here the Babok described it, describes it as modeling can begin with any elicitation result and may lead to the need for more elicitation to clarify or expand upon requirements. Elicitation modeling may occur sequentially, iteratively, or concurrently. So in most cases these days, it would happen iteratively and concurrently, um, but there may be situations where it happens sequentially. So now you've done, you've taken all your elicitation results and you've done some modeling, so what do you have at the end of performing that task? You'll have requirements that specified and modeled. So it's important here to tell you to spend a bit of time to get familiar with the different statuses of requirements when they are described as input or outputs. In this case, the status is specified and modeled. So the Babok describes it as any combination of requirements and or designs 
in the form of texts, matrices, and diagrams. So basically any of the artifacts that you'll produce to describe the actual requirements um, that's been transformed from elicitation results. Okay, so if you tell yourself a story like that for each of the tasks, it's going to help you remember each of the individual inputs and outputs. So let's now have a look at the next task, verify requirements. So let's remind ourselves, what is this about? So this is to ensure that requirements and design specifications and models meet quality standards and are usable for the purpose they serve. Okay, so let's have a look at the inputs and outputs. So again, your input here is requirements with the status specified and modeled. So if you think about the story we're telling ourselves, that makes sense because we've just documented the elicitation results, we've transformed it into requirements that's specified and modeled. Now we need to verify that those requirements are in fact at the quality standard that we want it to be. So any requirement design or set of those may be verified to ensure that text is well structured and that matrices and modeling notations are used correctly. So that should also make sense to you from a, trying to understand the logic of the input. Now the output might be even easier for you to remember. This is requirements that's been verified. So the state is here, verified. So the BABOC describes it as a set of requirements or designs that is of sufficient quality to be used as a basis for further work. Excellent, so let's look at the next one. So now we look at validate requirements. So let's remind ourselves, what is the, po the point of having validate requirements as a task? So the purpose is to ensure that all requirements and designs align to the business requirements and support the delivery of needed value. So if we look at the inputs and outputs, again, we'll tag requirements as they are specified and modeled as the first, um, as the status that they'll come into this activity. So in, according to the BABOC, we're talking about any types of requirements and designs that can be validated. So validation activities may begin before requirements are completely verified. So that's important for you to take note of here. However, validation activities cannot be completed before requirements are completely verified. So take note of this point. It's really important for you, especially if you're going to start interpreting some case studies during the exam. So you can start validation. So you can check that it is the correct um, aligned requirements, it's got the right meaning, etc. cetera. Um, but you also have to complete verification before you can have it all completely validated. And then the output of, of this particular task is requirements are validated. So according to the BABOC, they describe it as validated requirements and designs of those that can be demonstrated to deliver benefit to stakeholders and align with the business goals and objectives of the change. If a requirement or design cannot be validated, it either does not benefit the organization or it doesn't fall within the solution scope or both. Okay, so let's move to the next one. So then the task define requirements architecture. This is about to ensure that the requirements collectively support one another to fully support the objectives. So in terms of the defined requirement, requirements architecture, input and outputs, with the inputs, we've got requirements in any state. So every requirement should be stated once and only once and incorporated into the requirements architecture so that the entire set may be evaluated for completeness. So it's interesting here that they are happy for any requirement of any state to be included within this particular exercise. And it's likely because this may happen as an ongoing activity to ensure that you've got a complete requirements architecture and you can identify any gaps in the process. Then the other input here is information management approach. And that defines how the business analysis information, including requirements and models will be stored and accessed. So it's important when you start working on defined requirements architecture that you are following the information management approach that was agreed. 
um, upfront during your business analysis, planning and monitoring. And then that's why that's an input here. And then the third input is the solution scope. So this is actually, if you think about it, a very important part of this, because that helps us to see that we've got the entire requirements area or the enti entire requirement scope covered in the architecture. So here they say must be considered to ensure the requirements architecture is aligned with the boundaries of the desired solution. That's a very elegant way of saying what I've just said before. Okay, so then the outputs. Quite straightforward. Um, this is the actual requirements architecture itself. So the requirements and the interrelationships among them, as well as any contextual information that's recorded, is captured within the requirements architecture itself. And that's the only output. Right. So now let's have a look at the fine design options. So with this task, the purpose is to define the solution approach, identify opportunities to improve the business, allocate requirements across solution components, and represent design options that achieve the desired future state. So let's look at the inputs and outputs. So with the inputs here, we've got the change strategy. And as you will remember, this describes the approach that will be followed to transition to the future state. So this may have some impact on the design decisions in terms of what is actually feasible or possible. So that makes pretty good sense if you think about it from that perspective. Then another input is requirements that's validated and prioritized. So this is important to take note of the status here. So here it's about the only validated requirements are considered in design options. If you think about that, that makes sense. Why would you go through the effort of design options and defining design options with requirements that hasn't been validated by the source and the stakeholders for accuracy, et cetera? So that makes perfect sense. And then they say here that knowing the requirement priorities aids in the suggestion of reasonable design options. So requirements with the highest priorities might deserve more weight in choosing solution components to best meet them as compared to lower priority requirements. That also makes a lot of sense. You would want to make sure that your design options that you present aligns with the priorities of the project. And the, the priorities of the requirements is a great way to steer that design options to be in that way. Okay, then the last input here, is the requirements architecture. So this is the full set of the requirements and their relationships. And that's important for defining design options that can address the holistic set of requirements. So this is just an aid for this activity of defining design options, giving us the full picture of the requirements. Okay, so now let's look at the output. Pretty straightforward in this case, where it is the actual design options that we've come up with performing this task. So this will describe various ways to satisfy one or more needs in a context. They may include solution approach, potential improvement opportunities provided by the option and the components that define that option. Okay, so let's have a look at the last task in this particular knowledge area. So analyze potential value and recommend solution. So with this task, it's to estimate the potential value for each design option and to establish which one is most appropriate to meet the enterprise's requirements. Okay, so now let's have a look at the task, analyze potential value and recommend solution in terms of its out inputs and outputs. So firstly, potential value is an input here because this can help us in the form of a benchmark that we can use to assess the value delivered by the design that we're considering. And design options, we clearly need this information in order to be able to recommend a final option or a final solution. So this is there so that we needed to evaluate and compare to one another to recommend one option for the solution. Now you can imagine with the output of this particular activity, 
we've worked up to this point where we can actually make a solution recommendation. And that's exactly what the output is for this task. So it's all about we've identified the suggested most appropriate solution based on an evaluation of all the defined design options. The recommended solution should maximize the value provided to the enterprise. So if you keep reasoning through each of the inputs and outputs, it will go a long way to help you prepare and have a really good holistic understanding of how all of these different tasks fit together and feed each other with information. Great, so I've got a very quick flash quiz for you. So the first question, what is an input to the task validate requirements? We did speak about that a bit. Yes, so it's requirements that specified and modeled. And the second question, which output describes the interrelationships between requirements? See if you can remember. Yes, requirements architecture. Good work. So this is over to you as always. Um, if you've got any questions, please raise it in the Babox3 Facebook group. And if you're not part of the group yet, request access. I'm happy to let you be part of our group. What examples can you share? So perhaps you've had some um, practical examples where you have some of these inputs come into your work that you can share with others. And that could really help bring it all to life for people. And then, yes, if there's anything you can think of that we need to know for the exam, please share that as well or ask questions so that we can all learn through the questioning. Thank you very much. As you know, I'm Esther Lessing um, and I'm from Business Analysis Excellence.